Hello and welcome to K21 Academy's DevOps video series. Today our DevOps Institute certified expert trainer will tell us about Ansible. It's configuration management, playbooks, tower and much more. Ansible has filled all the holes in the configuration management and IT orchestration world. In this video we are going to cover what is configuration management, CM tools such as Ansible, Salt, Chef, Puppet. Along with that we will also cover Ansible playbooks, roles and galaxies. Ansible Tower, and much more. Before we move ahead, I would like to recommend our previous video on Jenkins introduction and prerequisites. You can also check out our blog on the same by going on to k21academy.com slash devops20. So let's hear from our expert trainer what he has to say. So what is a configuration management? So before learning Ansible, what is a configuration management? Uh, as the name indicates, it is mainly used for configurations. So if you are an operations team and if you are actually managing a list of all the production servers and if you are actually managing all the configurations out of it, configurations in the sense like RAM, memory, CPU and number of uh, hard drives and number of uh, LAN cables and other things. So these are all the different configurations out of it. So if it is on-premises then these, these will come into the picture. If it is going to be cloud then number of public IPs, number of subnets, number of VPCs and other things which is a virtual one will be coming under the consideration of configurations. And how do you version control it? What is the use of version controlling of it? Because if I am managing a, <coughs> or if I am creating a, a virtual machine and later after two days, three days, I need to again create a same virtual machine with the same configuration and everything. I don't need to write the code again and again. I can just use the same code that I have written two days back and I can create a new virtual machine. Like that I can create hundreds of virtual machines in a fraction of time. And if I don't want, I can even destroy the hundreds of virtual machines with the same code so that it helps me to save my cost as well. That is the main use of this configuration management. Now uh, let us learn one more thing called Jeff, Puppet and Ansible and Solstack. So what are these four? These four are actually nothing but uh, again, these are all configuration management tools or you can even call that as an infrastructure as code tools. Basically, what is the main difference between Chef, Puppet, Ansible and Solstack? So here is a table that actually tells you what is the main difference. So on the scalability side, Chef, Puppet, Ansible and Solstack both are highly scalable. You can, you can increase the number of servers, you can decrease the number of servers, anything is possible. And on setup purposes, Ansible is very easy because for Chef, Puppet and Solstack you just need a master and agent whereas for Ansible it is very easy for us and for availability purposes everything is highly available and uh, to write the code actually Chef uses a Ruby language and Puppet actually uses Puppet uh, DSL language and for Ansible it uses an YAML language and for Solstack it again uses YAML and for uh, 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 GitHub activities, you can see there are a number of contributors for this particular Chef and Puppet and Ansible and Solstack. So if you see on this, uh, actually Ansible has a large number of contributors and Ansible has a large number of commits. And on the enterprise cost, for, for setting up Chef, it takes $7,200 per year. And for Puppet, it's $12,000 and for Ansible, it's $10,000 and Salt, it's $15,000. And for a popularity perspective, Chef and Puppet are the old uh, traditional tools whereas Ansible and Solstack are on new tools and uh, success story you can see like there are a lot of other companies that is using these particular configuration tools and uh, on the scorecard if you see on the overall thing Ansible stays number one because it's very easy to use and it is also much uh, easy to set up and other things that we will further see on our uh, advantages of Ansible side so this is just the basic difference between your Chef Puppet Ansible and Solstack now Coming back, what is Ansible? Ansible is an open source IT configuration tool and it is mainly used for deployment and orchestration. Uh, it is mainly used for an enterprise purposes for eliminating the automation challenges. If you are an operations guy and if you are doing a regular activity again and again, like for example, creating a an user, copying of files every day, you can even automate those things as part of this Ansible. And it is very simple and very powerful tool as well. And why do you need to use Ansible? Ansible uses the simple syntax called YAML okay? and it mainly uses the YAML syntax and it is mainly used for your uh, playbooks and Ansible another, uh, sorry, Ansible, another usage is agentless. As I was telling you about you don't need to install separate agent and other things it becomes very easy for you 
and it is very efficient as well and it is very powerful and flexible as well it is very easy to set up it is very easy to use and the syntax are all very easy and it doesn't require many uh, uh, what do you call uh, high-end configurations and other things that is the main use of this ansibles and what ansible can do ansible can do these things provisioning of infrastructure configuration management like as i said saving and uh, saving the code as a version control and everything application deployment such as if you want to install any softwares or other thing it can do it security and compliance if you wanted to change any passwords or other things or if you want to hard code sorry if you want to save any passwords as part of your vault it can do it orchestration orchestration is mainly like it it also takes care of your multiple agents and multiple nodes and other things and it can help you to plan code continuous integration build test monitor deploy and a lot of things so ansible mainly plays into your deployment area as part of your ci cd pipeline okay so we will be seeing about ansible plays and ansible playbook so till now we have seen what is an ansible what is an introduction of ansible what is an ansible configuration file what is an ansible host file and what are all the list of modules available in ansible and what are all the list of different modules that we have seen till now so now what is the difference between plays and playbooks a play is nothing but list of tasks and the role that should be run playbook is nothing but as a collection of plays so i was telling you while executing that uh, or while informing about the ansible modules and ad hoc commands i was mentioning to you like if you combine all the four or five commands into a single uh, text then or a single file then that is called as a playbook similarly play is nothing but executing a single command is called as a play okay so that is the main difference between playbooks and play and how are playbooks written playbooks are actually written with the help of an yaml commands and they have to launch tasks synchronously and asynchronously as well now this will be the sample playbook if you see on the left hand side we are actually creating a host called web servers and this host i told you while creation of the host files like netc ansible host and you will be creating that group name of list of all the web servers so i'm just targeting the web servers over here and i'm just giving the variable of port number 80 and the maximum clients that i can deploy is 200 and uh, i just need to execute it using a remote user called root and these are the list of tasks so first i'm using an m module to install apache tomcat server and then i'm using a template module which i was telling to you about the jinja template and then i need to use a notify module which is nothing but the notifications like once if the service is restarted i just need to notify them and accordingly i need to use a handler handler is nothing but after the notification is completed it will go ahead and then list us a email or it will it will notify us over the particular incident has been happened or not and similarly on the right hand side you can see the syntax of it like you can become an s become method is sudo become is nothing but you have to convert yourself as a root user gathering facts is nothing but collecting all the notifications and logs and everything and you can give a variables and task under the task you can give multiple task names like list of all the modules that we have seen so this will be the sample collection of a playbook which means if you see i've used m module i've used template module i've used service module i've used handler module so i've used four or five modules into single uh, file and that is called as a playbook execution and we have another concept called dry run and check mode what do you mean by dry run and check mode so i want to make sure whether my playbook is correct or not but at the same time i don't want to install the playbook so what i can do i can just use an option called hyphen hyphen check which actually does a dry run and it will not execute the original commands but it will check whether my syntax is correct or not by executing it line by line so this is just a method of simulation okay so it depends upon your previous commands it, it is great for one time node executions and it is just used with the help of hyphen hyphen check option so it is just going to check all our syntaxes but it will not execute it on the real time and facts gathering facts gathering is nothing but i have told you like it collects the list of all the logs it collects what is the uh, host name it is done and what is the list of commands it has been executed when it is executed and what is the ip address that has been executed so that is nothing but the facts gathering so when you execute a playbook you can use this facts gathering to collect all the facts debug is nothing but once after you collect the facts you just need to debug it and report it so the register keyboard is actually used to gather the results of a particular playbook and it can be given inside the playbook itself so if you see on the left hand side we are given that register command and the debug command and on the right hand side you can see the output like on the debug it clearly tells like what is the list of logs where it is executed whether it is changed or not and whether it is true or false all those things can be given as part of your debug and reports command inside the playbook itself 
and this is a Jinja templates as I was telling you about you can actually create a skeptical file that you wanted to use as a variable that you wanted to use as a configuration management file and you can even save that as part of your version controlling as well so these templates are generally called as Jinja templates and it is abbreviated as .j2 template language it can be used under the template module as well Galaxy is nothing but collection of roles so you can go to ansiblegalaxy.com and you can see a list of all the roles specified and what is a role as the name indicates a role is nothing but a particular uh, work that a person has to do for example if he's an administrator then he has to do an admin role if he's a developer he has to do a developer role that is called as roles and roles can be dropped into an Ansible playbooks immediately and put to work so you can file different roles for provisioning infrastructure deploying applications and all the tasks that is given on day-to-day -day basis so you can log into ansiblegalaxy.com and you can go and search for a particular role and based on that you can download it and you can use it as part of your Ansible playbooks and this is the website to go and download the roles galaxy.ansible.com Parallelism is a concept in Ansible where you can run an Ansible playbook for multiple missions at the same time so for example if I wanted to execute a same script for 10 missions generally what happens if you're not giving a parallelism or a forking concept it will execute one by one by one missions so it will take some time for you guys to execute up to 10 missions whereas if I give a parallelism concept by default uh, the fork uh, concept and everything it actually runs to 10 missions at the same time so that your work will be done very easily so ansible process will create the folks to execute the actions in the parallel by default the process will be forked five times which means you can run five missions at the same time if you want to execute 10 missions then you have to give ansible playbook a playbook name hyphen f and then number of missions where you wanted to do a parallelism if that is the case then you can even go inside the playbook and you can even tell them like what is a serialized mode what is a parallel mode if you want to run serialized means first mission second mission and then third mission you can run that or if you wanted to run a parallelized mode then you don't need to give something inside and you have to just give an iphone f option and then it automatically runs to 10 missions at the same time this is an ansible parallelism and the folks concept if you wanted to learn more about it you can visit you can always visit ansible documentation and learn about parallelism now let us see about another important thing called ansible tower ansible tower is nothing but an enterprise level ansible where it is a particular software and it has a graphical user interface dashboard and everything as indicated on the picture it is actually a web-based solution that ansible makes more easy for it teams to manage all kinds of resources so what are all the playbooks what are all the things that you're doing it on a command line you have to do it on a web-based console so Ansible Tower is actually free for first 10 nodes and then it comes with an enterprise cost as well. You can even have an LDAP integration so that based on a particular username and password you can allow the people to log into the Ansible Tower as well. And this Ansible Tower will help you to scale IT automation, manage complex deployments and everything in a visualized dashboard and role based access control and everything so that you can see whatever is happening on a visualized screen instead of actually seeing it on a console. And creating a playbook and executing a playbook is very easy. You just need to click a command button. Sorry, you, can, you just need to click a start button and stop button so that based on that the playbooks will be executed and you can see the number of playbooks executed number of passed and failed on the dashboard as well so this is just an enterprise solution of ansible so that was a devops expert trainer telling us about ansible and what it can do we also have a blog on ansible you can check it out by visiting k21academy.com slash devops21 Ansible is part of DevOps Foundation course in our training program where we cover all these topics in detail. If you are not yet DevOps certified and would like to see what to expect in the exam or how to prepare for it, I would like to invite you for a free 90 minute session with DevOps Institute as well as Microsoft Certified DevOps Expert Trainer. We will talk about DevOps Foundation course. Additionally, we will show live demo of website deployment on Docker using Jenkins CI CD and talk about different DevOps tools. We will also share information about the certification exam. So you can register for free by going on to this URL k21academy.com slash devops02. If you are interested in learning about containers and their orchestration, then please check out our Docker and Kubernetes video series. You can subscribe to our dedicated YouTube channel for Docker and Kubernetes. We also have video series to help you get started with Microsoft Azure Cloud and Amazon Web Services.